Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the previous video, I showed you a website, Video Logics, which shows different regions of the world, and it allows you to actually look at the wet bulb temperature that is reached at any given time, uh, basically updated in three hour intervals for the most part. And uh, what it's showing is that there's uh, extensive regions of, of the um, India-Pakistan border where, where we're regularly exceeding wet bulb temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius. In fact, some of the, 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 the highest I've seen is a 44 degrees Celsius wet bulb temperature. Now these aren't maintained for uh, you know, six to eight hours, they might just be for a few hours, but still they're, they're reaching the limits of human survivability. So it appears that this is the region of the world that where, you know, that's going to be the first to be uninhabitable from, from heat waves. Um, I've also discussed a little bit in the last video about this work that was done a few years ago by Camillo Mora and others, and the title of the paper, it's in a cardiovascular perspective journal, medical journal, it's titled 27 Ways a Heat Wave Can Kill You. Um, so let me go back to this paper. Um, now, so here's the uh, paper. So there's basically, you know, it talks about the heat waves, um, the European 2003 heat wave, the Russian 2010 heat wave, and it talks about how um, the area of the planet where heat wave conditions similar to these ones that killed all these people um, is expanding and is inhabited by 30% of the world's population. And that's that's right now. Dying from extreme heat can result by one or several pathways. Okay, um, so basically, you know, when the human body is exposed to heat, the hypothalamus triggers a cardiovascular response. It dilates the blood vessels. It directs blood from the core to the periphery to try to dissipate heat to the environment. So there's, there's thus there's inadequate blood flow to the organs. This is called ischemia, one of the five identified mechanisms. Then there's basically hypoxia of the internal organs, low oxygen, they don't get sufficient oxygen. That produces reactive oxygen and nitrogen, which then damages the cells. Cell temperatures, um, the core temperature rises, um, and if it exceeds the cell thermal tolerance, uh, it's called heat Cyto cytoxity. So both of these things cause cell death, like necrosis, and break down the integrity of cell membranes. And okay, it goes on, um, but this is basically, these are the seven main organ systems that can be damaged um, by physiological mechanisms triggered by heat exposure. So ischemia, where, where the blood is directed to the uh, skin, means that there's not enough blood going to these organs. It affects almost all of these organs with the exception of the lung. Then as the body core temperature rises, it surpasses the, uh, the um, limits of the cells in these different organs and you get starting to get cell death in these organisms in all of those cases. White blood cells react, they go to the region, um, they cause the, they, they try to fight the, um, you know, the, what looks like, uh, you know, the, the, they try to, they, they assume that there's some virus or bacteria that's uh, attacking the body, you know, so it's like a fever response. Um, and they go there and they cause inflation, in, in, inflammation, and that can um, affect all of these organ systems. The uh, dehydration can set in and there's a lack of, um, of, of water in the blood, so the blood actually starts to thicken and can start clogging in these, the, this type of scenario. And then there's another scenario here that affects a few of the organs. So if you count all these up, there's 27 different pathways that can kill you um, when you're exposed to these huge heat waves. Now, this is showing regions of the world. This is showing yearly averages from 1995 to 2005. This is the number of days per year when climate conditions, or weather conditions, exceed the threshold of temperature and humidity beyond which human death has occurred during prior heat waves. So 
This is uh, the uh, 1995 to 2005 case. It's very limited areas. This is what's expected. Business as usual, 2090 to 2100. So basically, this is the number of deadly heat days per year. And look at the bright red, the, the, sorry, the dark, the very, very dark red here is approaching almost a full year, okay? So when you have these heat waves almost a full year, I mean, how do, how do people live? These areas here will become, you know, uninhabitable, you know, completely, uh, people will not be able to live in those regions. And we know that, uh, you know, that 2030, 2040 is the new 2100. Okay, so this is extremely serious and well discussed. Again, um, this is an open source paper. You know, look it up. 27 ways a heat wave can kill you. We're, we're really underestimating the danger to human life from climate change. And this is happening right now. And as I showed you, we're exceeding these wet bulb temperatures. Um, whoops, I want to go to 230, you know, in this area, in this region here between India and, and Pakistan, mostly, mostly in Pakistan. Okay, so just to, uh, if you haven't gone to the Wikipedia wet bulb temperature site, you know, it's an excellent site. It talks about wet bulb and explains it, how it's measured, and some different ways that it can be uh, calculated. And there's a section on wet bulb temperature and health. You know, it talks about living organisms only survive within a certain temperature range. When the ambient temperature is excessive, humans and many animals cool themselves below ambient by evaporative cooling. And so humans and horses sweat you know, dogs and other animals, uh, you know, they, it can be via, via, via saliva. So, you know, dogs pant, their tongue is hanging out of their mouth and they're panting and that's, their, that's throwing off heat, similar to how we sweat. But of course, when wet bulb temperature exceeds the, um, you know, it depends on the body core temperature of the mammal, um, then you have the same sort of problem with, with mammals. Hyperthermia, you know, excessive heating and raising of the core body temperature beyond normal due to failed thermoregulation. Um, and it talks about a sustained wet bulb temperature exceeding 35 is likely to be fatal even to fit and healthy people. Well, there's a big misconception about this. You know, older people, very young people, people with underlying medical conditions are more at risk but when the temperature reaches, you know, and they can succumb to um, much less severe conditions in the 35 degrees Celsius wet bulb temperature. But fit and healthy people, it doesn't matter, you know, who you are. Um, the human body is just not able to throw off heat. So this is, a, this is an upper limit. Unclothed, you know, completely naked in the shade next to a fan at this temperature. You know, our bodies can't shed heat to the environment. We only gain heat from it. So this is a threshold because where we can no longer cool ourselves. Okay. Um, okay, so let's have a look. This paper here is talking about Southwest Asia projected to exceed a threshold for human adaptability. Now, I don't, I couldn't get the... Um, paper it's a it's behind a paywall but you you can see some of the figures here you know and basically this is showing the um this is showing the we call it the persian gulf or the arabian gulf is what they call it the the uh is what people in the region call it this is the red sea here but you can see these areas here where uh you have so so areas that will become uninhabitable will become that pakistan india border region but also these regions here um, and this happens because the sea surface temperature reaches um, you know will reaches about 35 degrees celsius it's been up to 33 in this region it hasn't i haven't seen 35 but when it reaches that then it's a totally different ball game how will people survive in these in these regions this is a paper uh, that talks about the adaptability limit to climate change due to heat stress. And, 
you know, it talks about, you know, basically wet bulb temperature is surprisingly similar across diverse climates. So this is a 2010 uh, paper and it never exceeded about 31 degrees Celsius. Any exceedance of 35 would induce hyperthermia and other, in humans and other man, mammals cause you, since you can't dissipate heat. While this never happens now, it would begin to occur with global mean warming. It says it's seven degrees Celsius. So, you know, we won't worry too much about what this says uh, because we're actually seeing it already. So 10 year, you know, nine years after this paper was published, we're getting these regions as I just showed you um, on the Pakistan-Indian border uh, where we're exceeding 35 degrees Celsius. Um, so this is showing basically uh, the, the red is the wet bulb temperature. Okay, so this is what we, you know, had typically. This is like 25 degrees Celsius. You know, as you go, um, you know, out in the climate models, uh, it shows you that you know, as you get this number reaching 35, that's when you have trouble. And that's the, so this is like a histogram of region of temperatures in that region. And all of these temperatures here lead to uninhabitability in those regions. Okay, so this is another paper that's uh, open source that you can look at and it's from 2010. Now, the temperature of a healthy human skin temperature, okay, so if the core temperature is 37, what's the temperature of the skin? So if you assume that the thickness of tissues is four centimeters, the skin is basically at 34 degrees Celsius, and the interior is at 37, and the surface area is 1.5 square meters. So 34 degrees uh, would be the skin temperature. So, you know, if the temperature is 35, then obviously heat is coming into the body and if the humidity is 100%, then you can't sweat to get the um, phase change to, to throw off the excess heat. This is another source. You know, baths at skin temperature of 37 are relaxing and sedative. Those hotter or colder are stimulating. Here's another uh, thing. After three hours in a hot room, skin temperature differentials amounted to only 2.5 Celsius. Okay, with normal clothing in a room at 15 to 20, mean skin temperature is 32 to 35. Okay, there is a range, you know. At room temperature, a person with two square meters of body surface area must, when nude, have a skin temperature of almost 32. You have to maintain uh, 33 to be comfortable, to be, in, and uh, this person uh, was in cold areas and he measured the temperature of his big toe and found it to be 42 F. So his chest temperature was 88. So of course, depending on your environment, you can have different um, skin temperatures. The skin is the largest organ in the human body. Okay, um, we can look at the human body uh, temperature, you know, and there is a lot of variation. So you can, you know, there's definitions of hypothermia normal conditions, a fever, hyperthermia, and hyperpyrexia. Okay, and if I scroll down here, um, you know, this is basically, you know, hot, you know, almost certainly death will occur at 44 Celsius, core temperature. People have been known to survive up to 46.5. There is some variation, normally death serious brain damage, anything over 40 starts to get very serious. You know, this is a, um, this is hyperthermia, if not caused by a fever, you know, this will be a, you know, some, and, and it, it talks about the normal conditions, okay, 98.6 or 37, and it talks about, you know, if you're too hot and too cold, you know, what, what uh, basically, you know, there's a very narrow limit of healthiness um, that, you know, of temperature for, for human health. Um, extremes of temperature and hydration. This talks a little bit about acclimatization. You know, how you can acclimatize yourself to, you know, over a week or two by, you know, if you're out in a really hot region, spend a, a little bit of time there, then be inside, spend a bit more time, and your, your, your physiology changes, your blood um, thickness changes, and allows you to somewhat climatize, acclimatize, but 35 and 100%, no, no thanks.